Cardio, Kirsty here with Little Salty Homesteader. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to my garden. Today I am starting some more seeds um, to go inside and then transplant out in a few weeks and I'm also going to be direct sowing some carrots. Um, what I am starting for indoors today is two types of kale, um, blue curled scotch kale and Nero de Toscana. And then the carrots that I am direct sowing today are dragon carrots. I am also starting a moss curled parsley, um, sort of trying to get some herbs going, some cooler temperature herbs going to go into one of my green stalks and throughout the garden for me to just cut and snip and use as it's growing um, in my spaces. So um, I am using Vigo Garden seed starting trays for I'm starting my seeds today. This is the large size and then this is the smaller size. Um, I opted for the large size for the parsley because I only wanted to start four. Um, so I didn't want to just use like a partial tray on the smaller ones. And um, I'm loving these a whole lot more than um, my 12 cell kind of much less um, robust trays that I have. So, um, that's what I'm starting the seeds in. The soil that I'm using is Fox Farms Ocean Forest. I, um, I always use that soil for my seed starting. It's really light and fluffy and it has a ton of nutrients in it. All my um, seed starts do really well in there. So I'm just going to continue using it until the quality goes down or somebody tells me that there's something better and I try it and like it more. Um, I have tried a ton of other seed starting mixes and soils in the past and this is just the one that works the best for me personally um, i know that it's kind of a budget buster because it is a little bit spendy um, we have a grocery store here in texas called heb that sells it for far cheaper than i've seen it anywhere else that's the only reason why i haven't uh, continued to kind of shop around for something less expensive it's because i can get it for like half the price there compared to other um, suppliers. So um, for the seeds that I'm starting today, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of plant information about them, um, sort of kind of help you guys gauge if maybe it's something that you're interested in growing in the future or so you can kind of get an idea of the things that do grow all right here in North Texas in the fall and winter vegetable garden. Um, for the record, it is 99 degrees outside right now, so it is quite hot, so it is really bizarre for me to be planting kale seeds, but here we are. Okay, so um, blue scotch curled kale is probably one of the most hardy kales that you can grow within your garden because it will withstand temperatures down to literally zero degrees Fahrenheit before you need to cover it with any sort of frost protection. Um, this one is actually growing in this green stalk right here on the other side. It has uh, survived this awful summer. Um, it survived last winter just fine. I do apologize, it's quite breezy out, so the wind chime is going a little bananas. Um, it is a large leaf variety that has many leaves per plant. Um, it is dark green and then the edges are very, very tightly crinkled. So it, it's like the little old men with like arthritic fingers uh, whenever you look at the leaves. Um, the leaves are sweet, tender, and crunchy, especially after a frost. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go eat some of the plants today simply because it's probably going to be quite bitter after all the heat that we've had. But once it starts to cool down, especially once we have those, you know, pretty chilly, frosty mornings, it tastes great. It is um, pretty quick growing, 30 to 55 days to maturity. It is a container friendly plant because it does not reach a super humongous size. Uh, it works great in this green stalk. Let me see if I can actually kind of show you guys. It's right there, not there, right there. It's right there. And um, as you can see, it's just growing out of one pocket of the green stalk. It doesn't get very big, maybe 12 to 18 inches uh, around at the most. Um, it is very versatile. It is used in smoothies, salads, microgreens, micro 
Um, you can make kale chips with it. One of my favorite ways to prepare it is in a soup called Zupa, Zupa di Toscana. Um, that's a really fantastic hearty kind of winter soup with sausage and potatoes and kale. Um, made popular by Olive Garden. It's not actually an authentic Italian soup. It's an Olive Garden soup, but it's really amazing. Um, we make it homemade here, so uh, it's glorious. Anyway, enough about soup. The other variety of kale that I'm growing is Nero di Toscana kale. It is also known as Lacinato or dinosaur kale. It looks kind of like a palm tree whenever it's growing. So it has like the one central main stem and then all of the leaves kind of come off of the top and they kind of do this drooping effect similar to a palm tree. Um, I could not find the hardiness temperature information for this kale, but it is incredibly cold tolerant as well before you need to worry about covering it for you know weather protection. It does get quite tall. It will reach around three foot tall. Um, that's especially whenever it has that palm tree kind of appearance. It is. Uh, it has dark, meaty, puckered leaves, and um, those leaves are dark blue, green in color. The flavor improves after a frost. Um, so again, once we reach those super cool mornings, that's whenever the flavor is going to be the best. This one is also fast growing, 50 to 60 days to maturity. Um, this one is ideal as microgreens or um, because those leaves are going to be more crisp than some other varieties of kale, you can saute it with bacon or pancetta. You can put it in soups and stews. Um, you can also make kale chips with it, but they won't be as like tender and flaky as uh, the blue scotch curled kale. And then for the moss curled parsley, um, this is a variety of parsley. Uh, it is cold and frost tolerant. It is grown as an annual. It, um, you want to grow this through fall and winter because, because of its cold tolerance, it has a milder flavor than the flat leaf parsley. Um, so some, some grocery stores you can find both varieties available. Most of the time when I go, I can only find the flat leaf. Um, I will grow both this year to kind of compare which one I like more. Um, but from the research that I did, this moss curled has a milder flavor. It is nutritious with vitamins A, B, and C. Um, it is known to freshen breath in the medieval times, middle ages and such. Um, they would eat parsley after a meal to kind of get rid of, you know, the garlic and onion breath stuff because oral hygiene wasn't really a thing then. Um, it is a biennial, uh, meaning that if you continue to grow it, like you start the seeds in the fall, grow it through the winter, on through the spring and summer into the hot months, and then back into the cold months again, that second year that it grows, it's actually going to go to seed, create flowers. Um, you'll be able to save seeds from that. However, uh, it's going to taste a lot better during its first year of growth. So most people will grow it as an annual. Um, it is a little bit slower growing than the kales. It reaches maturity in 70 to 85 days, um, but it does not get very big. It is only a 10 to 12 inch uh, tall kind of mounding plant, so it's gonna be kind of rounded. Now, the carrots, the way that I'm going to be planting those today, I'm going to be direct sowing them, but I tried, I'm trying a new method with sowing my carrots for this variety um, because I just wanted to see how it goes. So I have made all these different carrot tapes. And this is simply um, toilet paper. And you can see where I made like a flour paste to use as a glue. And I kind of measured out spaces for my carrot seeds. And I um, applied the paste, applied the seeds, folded the toilet paper over, sealed it up, let it dry. I'm just going to direct sow this directly into my garden, cover it with soil. As I water it, the toilet paper will break down, that flour paste will break down, and then what will be left, hopefully, is a lot of carrots. Um, so dragon carrots are a sweet, almost spicy carrot with red, purple skin, and a yellow-orange interior. They reach maturity in 75 to 90 days, um, so these are going to be a little bit slower growing than the kale, um, but um, one of the cool things about it is whenever you cook these carrots, the purple red color kind of fades. You'll be left with that yellow orange. 
Uh, they are a versatile root vegetable suitable for fresh eating, steaming, boiling, soup, and storage. The size of the carrot measures about seven inches long and one and a half inches thick when mature. Um, they are sweetest when they are grown in the fall. Typically here in North Texas, most of us don't attempt to grow carrots in the spring season because it gets so hot so quickly that the roots won't actually form in carrots at all. They'll just be a straight root and we'll have a bunch of like leafy growth and that's it. Um, you can overwinter your carrots in your garden and just come harvest them as you need them. As long as you have a thick layer of mulch over them or some sort of um, frost protection. The tops, the leafy part, can be used in pesto and other preparations so the entire plant is completely edible. Um, so that is the information for all the stuff we're going to be planting today. So let's rock and roll and get going. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the parsley first because there's only four of this. So, <laughs> so most of the time your seed packets will tell you how deep to sow um, your seeds. Um, on for this particular company it's going to be in these boxes along the side here um, sometimes they'll just write it within the instructions this is the same company so it's gonna have it in the same place but um, most of the time it will be written somewhere on that seed packet how deep you need to sow your seeds if you don't see it on the packet you can go to that seed suppliers website to try to get the planting information um, a good rule of thumb whenever you are sowing seeds is to plant the seed uh, no more than twice the size of the seed. So like these parsley seeds, the instructions say surface sown and it's because they're incredibly tiny. Um, but if it was something like these brassica seeds, which are literally the size of a mustard seed, you would just make your planting space twice the size of that mustard seed and then just plant it or brassicas. Okay, so I'll show you guys these parsley seeds really quick. These are surface sown, so I'm just going to kind of gently sprinkle them within all of the pockets. And yes, I realize, oh, sorry guys. Yes, I realize I'm going to end up with far more than four plants, that's okay. I have a pretty big raised bed garden here. And then I'm just going to simply press that into the surface. And um, what the pressing it into the surface is going to do is whenever those seeds do start to germinate, that's going to help those roots anchor into that soil um, so that they can grow pretty strong root systems. Uh, this is a humidity dome. The way that this works, this one for these Vigo trays is um, this is a water reservoir. Right? Move this. This is a water reservoir right here, and the water will drip through into this uh, tray, and it will water all four cells, and then also retain that humidity. So, pretty spectacular. I'm pretty happy with these so far. All right, now we have blue curled Scotch kale. My really fancy painters tape labels there. So this one says a quarter of an inch seed depth there. So I'm just going to use my pinky and make very shallow little divots here. Get that planted. And you can see those are the size of mustard seeds. Most brassicas are going to be very, very similar in size and shape. So if your seeds ever spill somewhere, um, I wish you luck telling them apart. <laughs> and I am planting two per cell because um, my seeds are a couple of years old and I just want to ensure good germination here. If I uh, end up with excellent germination and I don't have space within my garden for all of the things that I'm trying to grow, um, it will be survival of the fittest for these kales. The strongest, tallest, biggest, healthiest of the sprouts within each cell will be the ones that I choose to keep. And flip that around. Nero de Toscana is going to be the same way. And just make my little 
pivots here. And that's it. I will take these two trays in the house, um, get them put underneath the grow lights. The kales um, germinate best in temperatures between 55 and 75 degrees. My office um, is around 68 to 70 degrees pretty much all the time, so I'm not going to put these on a heat mat, um, but the light will just ensure that once they do germinate, they are receiving enough light each day. Um, the parsley, also is not going to require a heat mat, so it's just going to receive the same treatment. So I will go put these underneath that uh, grow light really quick, and then I'll be right back out to work on the- So the carrots are going to be planted uh, in the back bed of my tomato patch, uh, the bed that is closest to my house. Um, I recently transplanted the Brussels sprouts along the back row here. So down the middle, uh, that's where my carrots are going to go. I have 10 um, of the seed tapes here. Each has nine seeds, so that's like 90 carrots. Am I expecting 90 carrots? No, that is an awfully lofty goal. Um, but I wanted to get as many in the ground as I could so that I would be able to harvest as many as I could. So what I've done here is I've kind of dug some kind of shallow trenches here and I made them pretty wide so more than one piece of tape will fit within each trench and um, I have two of them here um, because I do have a big basil right in the middle so um, what I, I have also added a little bit of just all-purpose fertilizer in here just to give the soil uh, some more nutrition and then I'm going to lay the seed the seed tape down within these trenches and then use the soil to cover it up and then I'll water it in well. Whenever you're growing carrots, you wanna make sure that the soil stays super moist and that it doesn't um, dry out. The seeds need moisture in order to germinate. So um, what I'm doing here is I am just laying these into this trench here that I made and it's not totally perfect, but it's okay. All right, there we go. And then I will just use that soil that I moved and very shallowly kind of cover that up. I'm not doing it too deeply because um, those seeds are so tiny that as soon as they start to break through the surface, um, or as soon as they sprout, they need to reach the surface very quickly. So, uh, there we go. Hopefully all those roly polies that you may be able to see growing there. Don't eat my carrot sprouts as soon as they sprout. Uh, carrots can take up to three weeks to germinate. So if you don't see progress quickly, don't fret. They are a little bit slower. Uh, and they do also like cooler temperatures. <sighs> so this is all a gamble anyway, because it's a million degrees out. But let's get these other four tapes planted. So this is for the other four tapes here. Again, just laying them out. That's a worm. Oh, I guess there's 11. Okay, so we have 11 seed tapes total for these dragon carrots. Again, just very quickly, very shallowly, covering them with the soil.
All right, well, that's all the seed starting content I have for you today. Um, that's all that was listed on the seedtime.us um, application that I used to plan out my entire garden. So uh, the next task that I have on my list is actually transplanting some broccoli into that middle raised bed. Um, so that will be the next video that comes out. Um, but if you liked this video and you want to see more gardening content, more seed starting content, please like and subscribe, comment, do all those different YouTube -y things. Um, but until next time, go find a way to get those garden manicures. Bye!